Moving on to look at the layers of the epidermis, uh, we talked about the stratum basal. That is going to be the bottom layer. Notice it's not a nice straight line. So it is going to be just the single purple layer on your diagram. Also um, called the basement membrane is going to basically be the bottom part of that. Then we have uh, stratum spinosum is going to be the next layer and that's going to be right in here. It's a lighter pink. It might be a little bit hard to see, but I have purple, lighter pink. Here's like a darker color again, and then I have a thin layer. So stratum spinosum is the thickest layer that spreads out through. Then I have stratum granulosum, and the reason it's called granulosum is because you can see it's a little bit grainy. The cells have kind of a grainy appearance to them. And then I have a very thin, clear layer. That is the stratum lucidium. And then stratum corneum is the outside layer. So here again, another diagram. You should know these layers and know the order that they go in. So what happens, I started at the bottom where reproduction of cells take place. As new cells are produced, they push outward. So they start down here at the base and they're gonna move up, move up, move up until they're that outer layer. So as they move up, they keratinize or they produce keratin and they die. So four to five layers may be seen, the basal layer, spinosum, granulosum, and corneum, that outside layer. That stratum lucidium, that one little single layer, is very clear, and it's actually hard to see on a microscope no matter what, but that layer is very common in thicker areas of your skin. So palms of your hands and your feet will have this extra layer present. Uh, epidermis, very important. It protects uh, water loss, injury, microorganisms, prevents organisms from coming in. Other things that are found in your epidermis, uh, melanocytes. So remember, a site is a cell. So melanocyte is cells that make melanin. And this is what gives your skin color. I may fairly white Caucasian person. I do not have large amounts of melanin. Uh, someone who has darker hair, darker skin, their bodies will produce more melanin. So these melanocytes are deep in the epidermis and even into the dermis and they produce that melanin pigment. And that protects deeper cells from sun's UV rays and it gives you your tan. So melanin is very important for protecting underlying cells. So when you get a tan, that means that your body is producing more melanin. And that's basically a protective defense that your body does. Uh, the more melanin you have, the more protected you are. So lighter skinned people have less melanin, therefore their skin is not quite as protected, they're going to burn, and they have higher risks of skin cancer. So melanin is very important for protection. And then these melanocytes pass melanin to other cells, and it's called cytokine secretion. Basically, that melanin can transfer or it spreads throughout your cells. This picture, not as important. The only thing I want you to see is here is where that melanin is spreading out in between cells. So here's the melanocyte. Here's the actual cell that makes the melanin. And then it's going to spread it throughout to other cells. So your skin color is a result of genetic, which your parents gave you, environmental, how much time do you spend in the sun, 
and some physiological other factors that might be in your skin. Uh, some people might have a birthmark. Uh, some scars would be something that would affect that. Two, highlight this one. All people have, I don't care if you're white, black, brown, whatever, all people have about the same number of melanocytes. So the same number of melanocytes, it's the amount that they produce that differs. So what happens then is your skin color comes from how much melanin those melanocytes uh, give off, how well are they distributed, uh, maybe the size of the granules that are passed throughout your skin. Environmental, the more exposure you have to sunlight, the more melanin that will be produced. Uh, UV, like, uh, UV rays from sun lamps, you know, tanning beds, things like that. Even x-rays can cause a darkening of the skin. So those would be the environmental. Uh, circulation uh, also affects skin color. Poorly oxygenated blood gives you cyanosis. Um, well oxygenated blood gives a pinkish color. Cyan, what color is cyan? Anybody know? It's blue. So poorly oxygenated blood gives a bluer color. Um, when someone you know, maybe having a heart attack or choking, if their skin starts to turn blue, a bluish color, it's because oxygen is not getting to uh, their skin. Pink is a typical color. Yellowish skin color can come, and especially as a baby, if you feed babies a lot of like carrots, baby food carrots, their bodies are smaller, they don't absorb it nearly as well. Um, sweet potatoes, that very orange food, their skin color can actually change a little bit or their fingernails can change a little bit. So too many foods. As we get older, that chance is much, you'd have to eat a lot of carrots to turn your skin a little bit orange. However, liver disease, someone who has liver disease can turn kind of a, almost a bluish green color. Um, had a very good friend years ago that had liver problems, or even sometimes severe alcoholics, their skin color can change a little bit. Uh, dermis, so now we're moving deeper. Uh, the dermis is the thickest layer, and it's the binding part between the epidermis and the underlying tissues. There are ridges, and those ridges are called dermal papillae, and that's what I said, the border's not even. If, if I took off your layer of skin, it's not straight. It is very um, non-linear. Genetically determined pattern of friction ridges by this derm dermal papillae are what give you your fingerprints and even your, your like footprints. We talk about fingerprints because they're easy to take and we, you know, you can, find them very easily. Every person also has their own um, footprints. On your birth certificate, I know they have fingerprints. I'm pretty sure they put a footprint on your birth certificate also. Mm -hmm. uh, the dermis, like I said, areolar and dense connective tissue. It's gonna have collagen and elastic fibers that give it that uh, a little bit of ability to stretch and come back. And as you get older, your skin loses some of that ability. Uh, dermal blood vessels, remember the large blood vessels are down and subcutaneous, but up in the dermis there's going to be blood vessels. That's important because they bring the nutrients to the layers of the skin and blood vessels help to regulate temperature. Those vessels can expand to release more heat or contract to conserve heat. Uh, nerve fibers, hair follicles, sweat glands, we looked at those in that diagram. Make sure you can find or label them on that diagram. And there's the diagram again. Obviously, 
Obviously, I want you to know that one. And that's where we'll stop for today. Next time, we'll talk about accessories.